So are all prostate cancers bad? The marketing about prostate cancer has you convinced that most men will get it, most men will need treatment or risk dying. But is that true? Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this channel is all about medical truths and patient empowerment. Health Drum provides material for educational and informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimer and the material in this video are in the description below. And if you like to get fact-based healthcare information, please hit the subscribe button for me. Okay, so let's get into it and start sorting out medical fact from medical fiction. So what about a cancer diagnosis? This commonly sets off a shock wave of emotions but is this warranted for prostate cancer? So these are some typical reactions from people after receiving a cancer diagnosis. These include the following emotions, shock, disbelief, fear, anxiety, confusion, and anger, as well as a feeling of isolation. This feeling of isolation is in part because most people lack any understanding about their particular cancer and or treatment options. However, these days you can become quite informed through online searches or simply typing in your questions to an AI or artificial intelligence platform. Knowledge is king and it's important to understand the words that you will hear because the medical arena is full of unfamiliar words. This is particularly important in the prostate cancer arena because here there's a considerable amount of misinformation about testing and treatments. No, not all prostate cancers are bad or equal, and at the top of this list is the non-lethal Gleason 6 so-called cancer. In fact, the grade 3 within the Gleason 6 fails to behave as cancerous, as the Gleason 6 actually lacks the hallmarks of cancer and is a pseudo cancer. So why did doctors label the Gleason 6 as cancer? So physicians believed early on that the grade 3 within the Gleason 6 had features suggestive of a low risk cancer, particularly for its low power microscopic appearances. As well, they noted that at times there was a partial loss of the basal cell layer, often there were some minor molecular changes, and at times, one could identify grade 3 cells growing along or surrounding the small nerves within or near the prostate called perineural invasion. Individually or together, however, these findings are not conclusive of prostate cancer, as these features can be seen in benign prostate tissue as well. And more surprising, there are no verified deaths of Gleason 6 disease alone. So physicians are quite aware that the Gleason 6 lacks the hallmarks of cancer, but why haven't they dropped the cancer label? So let's drill down on some reasons why physicians are reluctant to drop the cancer label from the Gleason 6, despite knowing that many of their features can be found in benign prostate tissue as well. They claim that needle biopsies undermate the extent and grade of disease, which is very true. Dropping the label could give patients a false sense of security and stop follow-up visits. Renaming the Gleason 6 as a benign disease could expose physicians to malpractice if incorrectly diagnosed. And renaming the Gleason 6 could result in a missed opportunity for cure. These reasons are all overstated misstatements and exaggerations since there's no evidence that the Gleason 6 can upgrade to a more dangerous grade and there's no verifiable evidence that anyone has died from the Gleason 6 disease alone. So the Gleason 6 disease fails to behave as cancerous. What are other types of cancers and which ones are bad? So most prostate cancers are not bad as most grow very slowly often taking 40 years or more to reach one centimeter or half an inch in size. The majority of these prostate cancers have very indolent or lazy natural histories. In men over 65, the incidence of prostate cancer is about 60%, 
But again, most of these cancers are low grade and low volume and mostly outlived. In other words, most prostate cancers are not clinically meaningful. Despite all the fear-based prostate cancer marketing from prostate cancer awareness and support groups. So which prostate cancers are clinically meaningful? So about 30,000 or so men die from prostate cancer in the US every year, but mostly from the 10 to 15% high grade prostate cancers and not the 85% or more prostate cancers that are commonly outlived. And some high grade prostate cancers produce little or no PSA and will often go undetected. Also, Bone marrow aspiration studies have shown disseminated prostate cancer cells already in the bone marrow of some high-grade prostate cancers that appeared to be localized to the prostate. Amazingly, these disseminated cancer cells can remain dormant in the bone marrow for years or even decades before some of them activate and spread. This is the reason so many treatments only give a semblance of cure before these disseminated cancer cells metastasize even further. On the other hand, for many men with metastatic prostate cancer, their disease often behaves like a chronic medical condition. So although most prostate cancers are not bad and outlived, why is there such a strong push for testing and treatment? Well, the answer is that healthcare is financially driven and you can often get answers by following the money. So the prostate cancer industry, along with prostate cancer awareness and support groups, are commonly financially supported by big pharma and big tech to spread exaggerated industry messaging. This messaging is invariably fear-based and implies urgency about getting tested and treated or risk dying. And September was the month hijacked by the prostate cancer industry to promote testing and treatment of prostate cancers that are mostly outlived. So if most prostate cancers are outlived, are there any warning signs or tests that can help identify the few bad prostate cancers? Urinary and sexual symptoms are commonly marketed by the prostate cancer industry as being early warning signs for prostate cancer. However, these warning signs such as poor urinary flow, dribbling, getting up at night, blood in the urine, or having erection issues, or blood in the semen are not early warning signs of prostate cancer, but simply signs of aging. There is no irrefutable and reproducible evidence that these signs are associated with early high-grade prostate cancers. So what about the prostate exam? Can that detect early high-grade or bad prostate cancers? The prostate exam is dependent on the provider and different providers will feel different things. The prostate exam has very poor sensitivity and there are big differences between one physician and another physician when comparing prostate exam findings. As well, most prostate abnormalities detected on prostate exam turn out to be benign, and virtually all of these unreliable prostate exam findings lead to risky prostate needle biopsies. So the bottom line here is that the prostate exam is highly unreliable and without life-saving value. What about the PSA? Can that reliably detect meaningful prostate cancer? The PSA or prostate-specific antigen blood test is a highly unreliable screening test for prostate cancer. It has a false positive rate of about 78%. Its limits of normal being zero to four are made up and artificial. The specific label is a lie as the PSA is not specific for prostate cancer or for prostate tissue, and commonly big prostates generate big PSAs. As well, most prostate cancers are detected because the benign prostate enlargement elevated the PSA and not the cancer that was detected. And there are more PSA reliability concerns. A low PSA doesn't mean no cancer. A high PSA doesn't mean you have cancer. 
PSAs fluctuate throughout the day and between labs. PSAs are easily raised or lowered by various benign events. And some high-grade prostate cancers produce little or no PSA and will go undetected. So the bottom line, the PSA is highly unreliable as a screening test for detecting meaningful high-grade prostate cancers. So what about the MRI? This is sold as a perfect screening tool, but is it reliable for picking up just bad prostate cancers? So the prostate MRI is not a foolproof test as small areas of cancer are easily missed. As well, some significant prostate cancers can be harder to detect in certain areas of the prostate and there are differences in skills between radiologists for interpreting MRIs and risky biopsies invariably follow the imaging study whether the MRI was normal or not. The bottom line, although most prostate MRIs do not need contrast, the MRI study has no proven survival benefit. What about the prostate needle biopsy? Is that a reliable method for detecting bad prostate cancers? So how reliable are prostate needle biopsies for detecting the 10 to 15% high grade, potentially lethal prostate cancers? Not only are they highly unreliable, but they're also risky. Prostate needle biopsies are associated with pain, infection or sepsis, bleeding in the urine from the rectum or in the semen. It's also associated with erection issues and a massive sampling error as when the volume of the 12 cores is measured against the volume of the prostate, only about 0.1% of the prostate is sampled. In addition to the massive sampling errors, 80 to 90% of all prostate cancers are multifocal, meaning in two or more areas of the prostate and easily missed on a 0.1% sampling. So there's a very heavy push for PSA-based screening. But does PSA testing save significant numbers of lives? So this screenshot reveals some of the many truths about prostate cancer screening. Prostate cancer awareness messaging is fear-based and exaggerated. It exposes men to many health dangers, exposes men to unnecessary costs. It fails to save significant numbers of lives and the harms associated with prostate cancer screening outweigh any potential benefits. The bottom line here is that prostate cancer screening has no proven mortality benefits. So prostate cancer screening fails to save significant numbers of lives. What about prostate cancer treatments? Do they save significant numbers of lives? So what's the evidence that treatments for high-grade prostate cancer save significant numbers of lives? At about 12, 15, and 20 years, treated and untreated patients have similar survival rates except that untreated patients avoided all of the complications commonly suffered by treated patients. The bottom line here is that treatments result in a mockery of prostate cancer awareness programs and prostate cancer treatment guidelines and protocols because the bottom line again is that prostate cancer treatments fail to save significant numbers of lives. So what are some of the reasons that prostate cancer treatments are ineffective for saving significant numbers of lives? The screenshot reveals some of the reasons. Both open and robotic surgery are associated with a significant incidence of residual cancer or positive margins. All treatments are associated with a rising PSA or biochemical recurrence in 20 to 50% of patients within 10 years of treatment. High-grade prostate cancers may already have disseminated cancer cells in the bone marrow by the time the cancer is detected in the prostate. These disseminated cancer cells are only detectable by bone marrow aspiration and can reside in the bone marrow for years or even decades before some can activate and spread further throughout the body. These are some of the reasons why treatments commonly lead only to a semblance of cure. 
So what should men know about prostate cancer? So what should men know about prostate cancer? That most prostate cancers are outlived without treatment. PSA-based screening fails to save significant numbers of lives. That at about 20 years, treated and untreated patients have similar survival rates. That prostate cancer awareness marketing is financially driven and that most published medical research is false. As well, the standard of care label is a legal term and does not mean that a treatment is proven to be safe or beneficial. So how do we move forward to protect prostate cancer patients? So this list shows some of the things we need to do to protect prostate cancer patients. We need to discover new screening tests new treatments, and new tests and treatments need to be supported by irrefutable and reproducible data for safety and benefits. FDA approvals for the PSA and robotic device for prostate cancer should be rescinded as they are without proven benefit, and healthcare regulatory agencies need to be fully engaged to protect patients. Sadly, the current prostate cancer narrative is unreliable as most prostate cancers are not bad and outlived. So let's recap. In this video, are all prostate cancers bad? You learned that much of the prostate cancer narrative is fear-based and exaggerated. Most prostate cancers are not bad and outlived without treatment. Prostate cancer screening and treatment is highly unreliable and risky. Much of the prostate cancer narrative is not supported by irrefutable and reproducible data for safety and benefits. And there's no evidence that the current testing or treatment options save significant numbers of lives. And to learn more about routine medical conditions, self-care and digital health, check out these other videos. And if you like them, please share them with your friends.